have an engaging discussion, maybe share some success stories, some Q&A, and really you, you should come out of here with some actionable ideas of how to do that. And, uh, and Tiffany's just wonderful. Tiffany works at Agenix Digital Marketing, and she's been here for, I don't know, a few months, a few months, but she's really doing a great job uh, with a lot of our social media marketing, internet marketing, and really keeping things running smoothly at Agenix. So, and uh, Tiffany recently got engaged, He's got a front row seat, along with her family members, I believe, are watching in St. Louis. Is that correct? Or Missouri? So hi to Tiffany's um, family. Hi, Mom. And yeah, your future son-in-law is sitting right up here, Mrs. Um, Roger. Um, but, but the point is, you can watch these live, lhm.org slash live, okay? So we have a lot of people watching live right now, uh, including we have a big group in Iceland. Yeah, we have five people around here since. I'm not sure if Missouri or Iceland. They're all her relatives. Okay, all, all Tiffany's relatives are watching. So, but tell your friend. And if you can't make it here, you can watch. Okay, enough, enough about me. I don't want her mom to get mad at me. So let's just, let's give a big round of applause to Tiffany and uh, Digital PR. Or are they on Yelp? I know we have a lot of um, 
small business owners here that rely on Yelp for fan reviews, um, things like that, like Hunter and Neal's. So you have people um, spending time there. And that's a really important one when you're monitoring because uh, you get negative reviews and never know about it. Um, so you want to you figure out where they're spending time and then how to put yourself in that medium. Once you're at the medium, you want to find out who are the influencers. So this is a big one. We'll talk about this a little bit later with blogger outreach. Um, but you want to find out, is there a particular blogger that's going on uh, locally or globally that's talking about your subject, that's dedicated to your subject, that people are listening to and attaching themselves to and commenting on. Um, it's really easy, um, as we'll show you later, to kind of interact with those people and sort of attach yourself to their reputation that they've already established. Um, who gets the most reviews on Yelp? TripAdvisor, that's what we talked about that too. So who are the lead voices? And I think forums, a lot of time, are overlooked. Um, it's basically a group of people getting together, I think CNET has one, um, getting together and talking about something that you could be providing. And it's all opinions. So that's a great place to tap into. Who are people listening to there? And so what do you want to accomplish? What's the point of all this? If you're going to put your digital PR out there, you have a message, you have your audience, you know where you're going to turn it to. So what do you want from it? Do you want website traffic? Do you want um, page impressions? Do you want inbound links back to your site? That's a really important one for SEO, building that uh, link community of people uh, talking about and linking back to your web page. Um, do you just want to build relationships with customers or influencers in the community? That's a big one, too, and there's nothing wrong with that. Um, so once you've set these goals, you need to figure out how are you going to measure it. So let's say you want website traffic or more impressions. Um, Google Analytics, it's really easy. If you have a website, you can just check and see uh, where are these links coming from. Are they coming from PR web that you use? So that's a really uh, easy way to track that information. Um, and also, if you want uh, links back to your site, which we'll talk about later for SEO, um, there's lots of backlink checkers. Find out who's talking about you who's linking to you. So it's good to put those vehicles in place that you've chosen um, to figure out how you're going to monitor the success of your campaign. Listening. This is a big one. And this one takes a lot of time because you need to find what's being said about you already. And some of you may already know. Um, but things you might be listening for are complaints, compliments, praise that's coming from uh, people, testimonials that they may be giving, um, finding influencers in the community is a great place to do that. Uh, as well as looking for who your competitors are, for the people who are um, doing what you're doing and doing it well. This is, a, this is an important one for that one. So here's a couple uh, sites and programs that are available to you to track. Um, Google, of course, Google, Google, whatever. Uh, we're big fans of them. Google Alerts is one we use all the time. It's, it's one of my favorites. You have the ability to go type in Google Alerts um, and set up keywords. And Jonas does not marketing, lunch and ever marketing, Connor O'Neill's. So anytime someone writes about that, puts it online, uh, you get a notification saying, hey, anarver.com, put this in there about you, so check it out. And that's a great way. It also, on Twitter, it will also pull in tweets that people have written about you. So it kind of gives you that real-time advantage as well. Speaking of real-time advantage, we have Twitter search. And this is one of my favorites again. Um, it gives you real-time results. What are people saying right now about it? And this is great for crisis management if you're in a controversial um, type company where something's going on. It's great to manage that and be able to respond to that right away. I don't know if you remember during the World Cup, that was big. People were getting real-time scores from Twitter. I'm not even going to ask him or not. I think that was definitely the first year that was going on. So it, it, it's a great opportunity for that. Uh, Radiant 6 and Tracker are both paid. So if you're a larger company, um, these are sites you might want to check out or if you have funding for that. Tracker does have free tools you can use, uh, but to really tap into their wealth of knowledge, you need to do the paid um, sites. But, but for our company, it's really worth the investment. Um, you can do social media monitoring, as we talked about. You can also save some of the searches that uh, you've done. And Brandon Chester talked a little bit about this last week. Um, when you have Twitter feeds that you're monitoring, um, that information can go away based on the volume of tweets or the time they've been there. So you may not be able to access the information from two months ago that people were saying. Uh, so Radiant, Radiant 6 will save that information for you, um, then you can access it at any time. So here's what we're 
start talking, this is the meat. Uh, well, this is the influencers. These are people that you want talking about your brand. Um, and it's a symbiotic relationship. They get, they get material to write about that's interesting and engaging for them and their audience, and then you, you get press about you know, your topic, about your brand, and that's great, um, because these relationships are really going to benefit you in the end. And just a worry, this does take time. This is something that you're going to need to um, spend a little bit of time on, but it's, it's, worth, it's worth the risk. So where are you going to find these blogs? Who are the bloggers? You've done your research on your influencers. You've found them. So um, Google has a great blog search option. Um, and they don't just um, monitor their websites. Google has um, blogspot.com. They, they'll do all of them. So your options are really open there. Um, Technorati, Brandon talked about this last week as well. This is a great one for searching keywords, um, finding out things that you're interested in, um, that people are reading about. And then all top is a new one I found. Um, this one's a little different. It's it's better for kind of your pr preliminary search. Uh, what it does is it's a website and you browse by topic or interest, and it brings in the top headlines based on um, your location or the top you're interested in, and it brings in the top headlines. So those those are big influencers, and they might be a little bit uh, above your target, but they're definitely something to aspire to, um, and people who are paying attention to them obviously have been clicking on them so. So it's a, it's a good place to start to start uh, figuring out what, maybe if you need to find out what keywords you need to be targeting and searching for. So read the blogs. And this should be, uh, this seems like it would be inherent, but uh, it's not. A lot of people don't read the blogs. They say, oh, eco-friendly internship, which is one of the blogs we have uh, at Ingenix. That's about green technology. That's about, um, you know, compost or what? <laughs> it's not. It's about energy. It's about digital marketing. So you really need to read through these sites, find out, are they interested in what I have to say? Are they on topic with me? Um, so go through and read them, figure out uh, what they're talking about, and if it's going to be valuable to post it. Commenting on blogs. And this is, this is the big one. This is how you're going to start your relationship with these bloggers. As someone who contributes uh, to a blog, the digitalbus.com, that's in Genesis' uh, website, we'll talk about later, or our blog, I mean, um, you want to comment. What, when you write something, that takes time. That, that's something you're interested in. That's something that you cared enough about to put out there. So when you have people commenting on it saying, hey, I really like this, did you check out this? It's kind of, it's an interaction. It's the beginning, it's a foot in the door with these bloggers. Um, so they can say, hey, I remember you, when you contact them later, because this is what this is ultimately about. Um, it, it's a great place to start for that. So one of my favorite things, because I am a social media maven, I, I like to find people on Twitter. It's so easy. I like to find them on Facebook. I like to find them on LinkedIn. And it's, uh, it's a great way to say, hey, I want this extra stuff. I'm interested in what you have to say. I'm going to find you on Twitter, and I'm going to comment on something that you post on. It's, um, it's a really effective way. And how you do this is, um, I don't know if a lot of you on Twitter, I hope so, who's on Twitter? So you use the ad symbol, right? You find out what their handle is and you use the ad symbol and um, contact them that way. Some of them have specific hashtags that they have. Um, hashtags are a way of categorizing. And if you haven't checked it out, hashtags for life, write it down. <laughs> a little plug there. Um, also, if you want to find people, if you, if you haven't found the blogs yet and you want to find journalists or bloggers that are online, Muckrack is a great place to go. M-U-C-K-R-A-C-K. It's so all the journalists and all the bloggers that are on Twitter that they know of. And that's um, sectioned out by topic or area or area of interest that you want to find. So that's a really great resource to be finding the blog. Also, simple Google search. Um, a lot of people um, <coughs> on their websites don't want to put their email in because of spam. Uh, I don't know if you notice, sometimes when you go on these websites, they'll spell out .com and the at symbol. There's so much spam out there. It's like it's a death sentence if you put out your email. So what they'll do is they'll put their Twitter handle up. Because that, that, that's not going to hurt anyone. You know, if you get spammed by Twitter, it's not, it's not fun, but it's not terrible. It just ups your Twitter followers anyways. So a lot of people will put their Twitter handles on there, their Facebook, their social media contact information. So that a, a simple search will provide that information for you. 
So now that you've done your research on them, you've found them, you've contacted them, you've commented on their blogs, um, you've got a picture. And this is, this is a tough part because this is where you actually have to put yourself on the line and say, hey, I, I want to use this relationship that we've built together. Um, so the shock and effect is not going to work. Um, so what you want to do is go on their websites and read their biographies. This is going to have a wealth of information about them from their location, possibly their actual name, their interests, subjects, what is this blog about. Um, so you want to implement some of that information into um, your pitch. Say, hey, Derek Marabond of the Digital Bus. Uh, I see you like digital marketing. I think, you know, I hope you remember I commented on the post about the Mike Tirico event that you sponsored. And also whether I'm there in Ann Arbor. And that lets that lets him know, hey, this person knows who I am. Whether they actually whether you actually do or not, it's it's the effort that really counts to them. So you really want to personalize it. Um, and, and this does take this does take a lot of time and this is commitment, but um, it's gonna boost your reputation. And uh, a lot of smaller companies can do this, and, and that's kind of the whole point of this. In the, in the Lunch and Arbor community, there's a lot of small businesses, and you can do this. Um, but a lot of the larger corporations don't have a lot of time for this. Um, so they'll hire outside agencies like the Gen X or whoever to do this for them, because it is really important, and it's a whole other section, digital PR, whole other section of what we do. So um, that's an option we do. So here's a couple of do nots. I always like presentations when people are like, don't do this, because then you know for sure, do it. So don't send unintroduced press releases. <laughs> people hate that. I hate that. When people send me something and say, here's my press release. Even if it's interesting, I don't want to read it. I don't know who this person is. I don't know what they want. I don't know who they are. So, so I'll delete it. So what you want to do is go through again and say, hey, that personalized pitch, and that's where that comes in. It's very vital. Also, if you are going to send some kind of supplementary information, like a news release or a very interesting press release, because they kind of don't like press releases over the blog community, um, you want to not send it as an attachment. Say you get an attachment and it's a zip folder of two press releases. Do you want to open up a zip folder from the internet from Joe Schmo, they don't meet? No. So, so you want to actually copy and paste that material right into the email. and. Um, if they want to read more, if you want to put the first two paragraphs or not, I'll have a link at the bottom so you can read more, find it on my site, which we'll talk about a little bit later. Um, so don't send attachments. They're not going to get open. They're not going to get read. And they're risky. Um, also, don't write to your blogger. I know we talked about personalized pitch, but just don't do it ever, ever. Even if you don't know who they are, it's, it's kind of rude in the blogger community <laughs> to just say, hey, blogger, or it's kind of like when you're sending out resumes and cover letters. Hello, human resource manager, he or she. It's <laughs> so don't do it. Um, and finally, follow up. Don't hit them and quit them. Follow up. <laughs> You've got to um, keep this ongoing uh, conversation with them. If they didn't pick up on your launch on our marketing, my trade of belief uh, release, not belief, um, then you can come back later and say, hey, I sent that to you. You know, is that something that interests you? Or something totally different, you know, just contacting them about their blog. So, um, Keep following up, and it takes time, like I said, but it's, it's worth that relationship. So here we go, writing and distributing PR. And this is, um, this is a great way to get the voice out there, because you're creating your own content. You're putting it on your own websites that you choose, um, whether it's paid or free. Um, you can control what's being put out there, and the links and the way that you do it. So, so this is one of our top ways that we do digital PR. And, the, and one of the big reasons why you're doing it is SEO. Think about it. You put out a press release, and it has keyword links to restaurant in Ann Arbor, hotel in Ann Arbor. Those are links that you put out there that Google and all the search engines are indexing, and, and you've controlled it. And that's ultimately going to boost your SEO. Also, um, another tip. When you are putting in links, a good rule of thumb is one per 100 words. Um, as you put in links, it splits the words of the links on that page. Um, so one per 100 words is a good rule of thumb so that you get enough that it's worth your time, but it's not too much that it's um, kind of defeating what you're doing in the first place. Also, and this seems like a no-brainer, but fill out, when you're doing websites like PR Web or 
fill out the information 100%, contact info, email. A lot of times they won't share your email. It'll be a private uh, way that if someone wants to contact you, they can contact you through another service. So fill out all that information. The more information that you have, the easier it is it's going to be for people to contact you, and that's going to ultimately benefit you. Um, let's talk about the placement of keywords. This is a little SEO quick tips and tricks. Um, when you're figuring out what keywords you want, uh, and you've already kind of established them, you want to place them in, and this is great, this is a great example. This is our launch and our marketing and my group release. So what do I want people to search for and this to show up as number one? Lunch and Arbor Marketing, Mike Tirico, Peace Neighborhood, Donation. These are all things that you would want um, to show up for. So, Lunch and Arbor Marketing, LA2M, uh, and Mike Tirico, they're in the very front. And that, that says to the search engines, these are more important. Um, so when people do search for that, this is what's going to come up <coughs> instead of some article that you, you don't have control over. And also, when you're doing your keywords, you want to send people to strategic places on the site. And when I say keywords, I mean they're linked keywords. You have restaurants in Ann Arbor, and it's clickable, and when they click on it, it goes to Connor Wheels Restaurant. Um, but for the most part, you don't want to send them just to your general Connor Wheels webpage. You want to send them to something that's going to be of interest to them. So if they wanted to go to the Connor Wheels website, they can just do it. They know it's there. So wh why not send them to Connor Wheels menu? or Connor O'Neill's um, meeting space. And those are, those are good ways um, to get people interested. And you want the keywords that you choose to match the keywords that are on that website. And then put them in the front. Um, so let's talk about paid sites versus free sites a little bit. So PR Web is an excellent, it's, I mean, I don't want to endorse, but it's one of my favorites. <laughs> it's really easy to use. Um, it gets a lot of information out there. When you put it up on there, they distribute and disseminate it to all kinds of journals, magazines, online sources, and you get to choose. Do you want to target Michigan? Do you want to target California? Do you want to target um, nonprofits, dogs? You can you can um, start to target those people, and it will send them out there out there to you. And when you go back and search for these. All these different places that you send it show up, and it's a great way to get the word out there. Um, MarketWire is another one that we use; they're excellent as well. Um, so, and also, whenever you send them out, you get lots of inbound links. So think about it: if you send it to PR Web, that's links back to your site. You're kind of borrowing on their online reputation um, to get links back to your site, and then when they send it out to Nonprofit dogs, you're also borrowing on their reputation and you're getting links back from them. So, this is all about boosting your SEO and you're going to come up higher in the search engines. So, as far as the free sites go, um, a lot of industries offer free public relations um, submission sites, but uh, Ann Arbor.com is a great one. We submit them in the business reviews. Um, they have a paparazzi section, um, but these are places that you can sort of uh, solicit your material that's welcome to them, and th that's what they want. You know, Arbor.com is all about the community, so um, that's a great, great place to post. As well as PRLog.org. This is one of my one of my favorites. You can break it down into um, different categories. Uh, your newsroom. You can, if you don't have time to create uh, a newsroom on your website, you can you can have direct people to the PR Log um, newsroom. It's a it's a great way to get your word out there. And then also, the number one place you want to post your press release is on your website. Surprise. <laughs> what we do at Ingenix is we have a uh, news section or stories. And um, this will show up on our website. So when people are searching, a lot of times ours will show up because it'll be, you know, Ingenix Digital Marketing, LA2M press release. Um, so that'll show up first. And it's great traffic back to your website. Um, so we highly, highly suggest it is a must to put them on your website. So once you have it on your website, once you have it on these sites, where are you going to share it? As we talked about, 75% of U.S. households are using social media. So how can you access uh, these places? Um, so your RSS feed. Whenever you write something on your website, uh, hopefully you have your RSS feed set up. 
cannot. We have lots of people that can help you with that. Ross is one of them. Three point seven nine. You can take that feed and you can set it up through a service like Twitter feed um, or FeedBurner, I believe, and they can send this information out to your Twitter, out to your Facebook. Um, some of them out to LinkedIn, although um, I don't think that works as well. Um, usually, you want to do that personally. Um, you can set it out, and it's, it's no effort on your part. It's set up once, and you send it all out there. And it's information that's going to go and then link back to your website. Um, social bookmarking sites. Does anybody use social bookmarking right now? A couple, a couple stragglers. All right. Well, you need to get on it. It's, it's the new, the new thing. Um, <laughs> uh, stumble upon. It's great. That is an excellent time waster, and it's also an excellent, excellent way for someone to stumble on your press release. Somebody who's interested in business, nonprofits, restaurants, whatever. This this press release will come up, and people have the option to like it. So. Um, on our website, we have something called Add This or Share This, if you Google that. Um, it's a button, essentially, that you can install, and um, it'll, it, it'll give an option for you to, to share all this with people. Uh, Mix.com is one, Dig, StumbleUpon, um, Delicious is like the, the big daddy of social networking. Um, so it's, it's a good way for you to be able to share a time saver for you, as well as other people who might want to do it. So we, we definitely want to get on the social bookmarking. So here comes that measuring success again. <laughs> so you set up how you're how you're going to track. So you want more page impressions. You want more people to go to your about us section. That's where you send them in your news release. Um, so your Google Analytics, you'll go back through there and say, all right, well, this is the date I sent it. Let me look at some of the analytics that are going on. And I'm by no means an analytics ex expert, so don't ask me questions about that. <laughs> but, but it's easy enough to use that you can see on the graph that I got a spike from this. And that makes it worth your while. And if you didn't hit those results, if you didn't get as many bloggers as you want writing about it, if you didn't get as many rates as you want, what's going on? So there's a... Um, there's a website that's called pressreleasegreater.com. Graders are kind of this new big thing. Well, they're not that new, but they're easier to access now. There's Twitter Grader, there's, I don't know, Facebook Page Grader. Um, and Press Release Grader basically tells you, you know, what reading, what level is this at? Um, how many inbound links are you going to get from this? Are there, are there any broken links as well? Because that's something you have to watch out for. Um, so it, it'll basically grade you and tell you where you can make improvements. Um, if you have any gobbledygook, I don't know if any of you have read David Nierman Scott's New Rules of Marketing and PR. Um, it's a great book. But you talk about gobbledygook, like jargon. People don't want to read jargon. That's the old way of doing media and uh, PR. So, so it'll grade you on that. And that's a good way to kind of get a feel for where you can make improvements and um, what you can do next time for success. So, what are, the, what are the five things you need to know about digital PR? The nitty gritty, this is what we're down to. And we've got a few, a few good tips for you. Don't be shy. If your company did it, write a press release. So, let's say you got a new hire. Let's say you sponsored an event. Let's say you are going to go to the walk and wag next year at the Huron Valley Humane Society. Chances are people are interested in that. People, people really do like feel-good stuff, but especially in Michigan, we have a reputation of, oh, we're so downtrodden. Well, we're not. And this is a great way for you to have good news that you control and send out to people that's interesting for them. Um, with the blog pages, though, you need to be make sure that you're being engaging, and this is something that they're going to be interested in. Because it, it, it differs a little bit from the traditional PR that you can send out. So you want them to make up their own story. So give them something interesting to write about. And I think coming a little later too. Um, so monitor and engage with your peers online. We <coughs> pay big dividends. So that's basically you know what the blogger outreach and the monitoring and the listening is about. Uh, LA2M has a group that Derek mentioned. Um, we have a LinkedIn group as well as a Facebook group. We also have a Twitter page. So these are places that you can engage in the lunch and ever marketing community and start getting talking about your company, start getting start talking about you know problems that you might be facing. This is a great way to start engaging with your peers that 
have that easily share an interest with you, which is this group. Um, and so you want to you want to engage by community. You also want to engage by industry. I'm sure there's tons of industries in here. Um, so so what is your industry? Figure that out, and then and then target people that are interested in that. LinkedIn has tons of groups, marketing groups, PR groups. Uh, restaurant owners, women business owners. I mean, this, this is a place where you can easily go and start finding groups or even create your own group to start a conversation. Oh, and one last thing, one last thing about this I need to mention. You have to have a voice in that community, in that group, before you can start soliciting people, right? Because if, if someone comes in and says, hey, look at my shiny new product, you're basically going to say, oh, well, I don't know who they are. Forget about them. I'm just going to kick them out first. So, so you need to have your conversation, your voice in place before starting to solicit your material. All right. So if someone else says it about your business, your value goes up. So how we've talked about blogger outreach. That's, we've talked about... Um, how you can solicit those bloggers and get them to start talking about your company in a positive way. But also, how many customers are satisfied with what you're doing for them? Customer testimonials, we, I believe in big time, because that's someone who has gone through your sales process or uh, whatever it may be, had done, used your products, and they have something positive to say about it. So we, what we do is go around and collect, and I know this is it's a little uncomfortable to do, but people don't mind giving good reviews about stuff, especially if they're pleased with you. That's a good relationship that you've built. So get customer testimonials. Put them on your website. I mean, if you look at on the Ingenix website, we have um, all kinds of testimonials on there from, from customers that we have that highlight different aspects of what we offer. Um, so those are, those are great ways to have our value go up. Uh, also, sites like Yelp. Um, I know we talked a little bit about this on the location-based business uh, presentation that we had. But um, what are they saying about you on Yelp? What are they saying about you on TripAdvisor? Did they come to Ann Arbor and go to your nail salon and have a bad experience? If so, your value is going down with that. So you need to be monitoring that, as we talked about before. Get in on Google Alerts and find out what people are saying. Be on these websites so you can track and monitor that conversation and um, handle it as it comes. So be interesting. Bloggers don't want to write about you if it's a boring story, if it's about how your net worth raised 2.5% in the past quarter. That's very boring, unless you're Apple um, or someone like that, which unfortunately not. But um, that, be compelling, be fun. It could be something as lighthearted as, you know, we have we brought balloons in and shared them with children out on the street. I mean, that's, that's very light and flaky, but I mean, that's something that a blogger's interested in. That's, think about the audience that your blogger is, is reaching to, and that should be a similar audience as, as you're targeting. Um, think about what they want to read about. Look through. What did they comment most on? Those are, those are the kind of stories that people are going to be interested in and want to, want to hear from you about. So be interesting. And then finally, digital PR is an SEO booster. We talked about the inbound links coming in. Uh, we talked about how uh, you can show up for the key terms that you've targeted. Um, so basically, it's all about um, boosting that SEO and showing up online. It's online is such a big place. I mean, you say it, and it's like, gosh, how do I tackle that? But, but these are really easy ways. With every press release, you're boosting your online reputation. You're boosting your SEO efforts. Um, and when, when you do put it on your website, you're essentially creating a new web page. NGENXDigital.com slash LA2M by Chariqova. That's a new web page. That's something that Google's going to index, and it's building your online reputation at your website. Um, and also, as I mentioned before, you're borrowing the credibility of, of um, these providers, people who are putting your content on their website. Um, you're borrowing that credibility and you're getting those links from there. Um, so it, it, it's definitely an SEO booster. And honestly, that's, that's why we're doing it. it this, is, this is the point of digital PR, is upping that SEO, showing up when people search for you. And that's the point of being online, right? I mean, if, if you're online, you're not found. That's the point. So uh, it's an SEO booster. So that's all I have for you today. Tiffany. <laughs>
miss some of this information, we're going to be having, I'm going to be writing a digital bus post. And it's uh, the digitalbus.com. I'll be writing some of these services that are offered and the things that I talk about and kind of breaking it down for you so you can get that information online as well. Great. Wonderful job, Tiffany. So I assume we have some comments, questions. Anybody want to share a digital PR experience or have a question for Tiffany? Who's got one over here? You mentioned uh, posting your your press releases on, online. Can you also put that into your LinkedIn business profile? Your press releases? <coughs> Absolutely. Um, you can embed or you can include an RSS feed. Um, onto your website or onto your LinkedIn page, and that'll show up as kind of like a streaming. You can also do the same thing with Twitter. Um, so you can use that RSS feed to go into LinkedIn as well. Yeah, that's a really good point. LinkedIn uh, is, is part of digital PR because you think about your audience. I'm just, I'm Tiffany's boss, so I'm just adding to this. But uh, you can really reach to your business audience by sharing strategic press releases, I would say, because uh, with every press release you put up there, it could be considered spamming. So um, LinkedIn has status updates now, right? Similar to Facebook and Twitter. You can just put the link right in there. Say, hey, read about our new product. Here's the link to it. Um, you want to follow up? Yeah. The reason I was asking is because of um, the LinkedIn has a new section for to list your businesses. There's a, there's always been it's always been a business profile, mm -hmm. but you can also add your business to. To the LinkedIn, I don't think there was a difference in the two. Yeah, you're talking about company pages. Company pages. Yeah, company pages. I don't know if does anybody know if you can actually put your press release directly into a company page? Not yet, right? Right. So you have to do it individually on your profile or uh, in a group profile. Uh, who had a question? Yes. You mentioned an RSS feed of your press release. Is that separate from the RSS blog feed? Yes. Right. You would set up, um, I think Zburner does that, is correct? That's what we use um, to pull those in. Is that um, a plugin? Can you get a plugin to do that? A plugin? Yeah, it, it depends on where you're pulling the RSS into. So you, you're talking about pulling it into your website? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, where are you currently? Are you currently uh, using press releases right now on your website, or are they no, listed somewhere else? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, you can segment your website. Make it ask to opt in. You want to opt in the blog? Do you want to opt in the Yeah. You can easily segment your own Right. Yeah. 
my understanding is because the newspapers are picking up, and the newspapers are going to write anyway when they pick up the news, news feeds. They correct it. So, so they're going to take in their, I'm sorry, they're going to pick up and they're going to add a little bit here and a little bit there. They're going to add a link or two. So even, you know, like I, I use PR wires sometimes, and they'll go in and they'll put their link in, into your article. To, that's why they can charge less money or free or whatever to also promote your, your articles. Yeah, the unique articles, which is, is different than digital PR, that's actually article writing for SEO. Those have to be unique or else the article sites will ding you because they don't want you to put the same article in 50 places. That doesn't serve their interest. They want a unique article that's only for their site. So, but that's a really good point. Um, well, let's listen. Why don't we give Tiffany a big round of applause? And now we will pass the mic and tell us who you are and what you do, and then pass it to a friend. And we're going to start over here in the corner with Miss Paula. And please stand up when you do time. Hi, my name is Paula Lowry. My company is Pat with Elizabeth of Marketing, and I help my clients get their website up to the top of the search results. Hi, I'm Janet Gutierrez, and I do uh, design social media and marketing for business. Hello, I'm Ross Johnson with 3.7 Design. We do uh, web design and internet marketing, that sort of thing. I also want to let everybody know that we started a free uh, WordPress group. So if there's anybody who uses WordPress on the website, the blog, uh, consider stopping by and you can find out more at WordPressAndArbor.com. Hi, my name is Ellie Fidel and I'm with the Cary Town House and House. It's an intimate company that down on 4th Avenue. Um, we're actually hiring um, for a managing um, director, somebody who would be in charge of the operations um, at the concert house and will work closely with the executive director. So, if you're interested, come see me. My name is Jackie Harkabaugh. I represent Prepaid Legal and Go Small Biz, and we offer access to top rated attorneys for a reasonable price. I'm Shannon Pointer with Capital Strategies. I'm an investment advisor. We have offices in Okemos and now Southfield. And we help uh, individuals and businesses diversify their portfolio and then correlated investments to in the market. Risk management is the cornerstone of our approach. Hi, I'm Michael Purdy. Uh, I'm uh, from New Spine Vacations Incorporated. It's a hobby site that I just decided to monetize. So you're welcome to visit the site. It's a directory of places to stay while you travel. Site? You find vacations that The letter U. Hi everyone, I'm Kendra Kerr with the Entrepreneur Source, and I help professionals who are in transition thinking about business ownership via franchise. So if that's you, please come see me. I'm Mark Olivier, I do affiliate marketing. Good afternoon, I'm Paul Cawley. I'm a general insurance agent in Northville, Michigan. Hi, I'm Ted Belding from Belding Consulting. I do things like optimization, computer modeling, and uh, data mining. So what does that have to do with uh, marketing? Well, one application is modeling things like viral marketing and ads. Hi, I'm Christine Maher. I'm with the Ypsilanti Area Convention and Visitor Bureau. I am the manager of communications. I send out press releases and update the calendar, website, and things like that. Julie Mack, also from the Ypsilanti Area Convention and Visitor Bureau. Um, we market and sell Washtenaw County uh, visitors and conventions. So if you ever go to a conference somewhere, uh, we want you to think about bringing that conference back to Washtenaw County and having people spend their dollars here. Thanks. Hello everyone, my name is Janice Milham. I have a company called Milham Images and I specialize in business-to-business -business marketing strategy. Um, I also use the concept of visual storytelling for business. So I'm the alternative to words and stock images. So thank you very much. I also want to mention um, I'm participating in a show this weekend at a place called the Keystone uh, Lounge in, in uh, Ypsilanti, it's a different uh, venue. And uh, I have a collection of 
uh, images of Detroit, which I have in my hand right now, of uh, just an interesting archives. And uh, they'll be on exhibit there at the lounge. Thank you. I'm Greg Creason, the Director of Marketing for the Vehicle Logistics Company, and I'm looking to increase my digital PR. Hi, I'm Tim Sefton from Volo Designs. Uh, we just released an iPhone app called the Ube. It's a virtual reality for stationary exercise. You say uh, travel the world without leaving the gym. So if you uh, do stationary exercise, check out the Ube. Hi, I'm Holly Bergen. I'm a senior at Michigan State and an intern at Ingenix Digital Marketing. <coughs> Yeah, man, I like it. <laughs> <laughs> My name's Emily Penix. Um, I work down the street at the Whole Brain Group. We do a lot of the same things you guys do. Um, we create what we like to call social media machines um, via your website. We also do iPhone app development and iPad app development. So. Hi, I'm Mike Freed. I sit on a number of nonprofit boards. Right now, I'm heading up a business development committee for Jewish Family Services where we're looking at uh, providing uh, services that will help support the other uh, vision of our organization, especially in the area of uh, resettlement. Hi, I'm Bob Frame, I'm Bob Frame Photography. <coughs> I'm a commercial and advertising photographer in Ann Arbor. I came here last week uh, for the first time, so I'm glad to find this place. I'm just here to learn as much as I can now. I work at Sharm Music, based here in Ann Arbor. Don't do anything marketing yet, but trying to learn. Hi, I'm Bob Shannon. I'm a CPA with my own uh, business practice in the Chelsea and Arbor area, so I help uh, entrepreneurs with their uh, startup issues in accounting and tax. Hi, I'm Mike Brooks. I'm with Import Technologies. We're a new startup company in um, Ann Arbor and Lansing uh, with raw materials. I uh, won't give you my elevator pitch, but uh, uh, hopefully you'll be hearing more about it soon. But I, what I do want to talk to you about real quickly also is I'm also a board member with the ACE uh, Annual Collaboration of Entrepreneurship, which takes place in January. And uh, we are looking for entrepreneurial companies to uh, uh, be in part of our entrepreneurs' uh, elevator pitch uh, competition that we have at that every year, and also be exhibitors. And if you have some companies that you represent, or you yourself are interested, please get in touch with me. Thanks. I'm Roger Rail. Um, I help people make their ideas work, and uh, as part of that, I, I help out at A2 New Tech. It's a monthly meeting where. Uh, entrepreneurs and VCs and other interested people get together. It's uh, going to be, instead of Tuesday like it normally, it's going to be on Monday, this coming Monday, at the Blah Auditorium at the Business School at U of M. Unfortunately, it's Monday, so it's also the same night as Mobile Monday Meetup, so uh, uh, you have to make a choice whether you want to go to A2 New Tech or Mobile Monday. But uh, we'll, we'll, I'll be videotaping and streaming it live, uh, the A2 New Tech meeting, so you can always watch it uh, live or you can watch it later, uh, but it's really best to be there in person so you can network like you do here. Hi, I'm Amy Ma. Um, uh, I'm doing a website in, uh, for children's uh, literature in multiple <coughs> languages. Hi, I'm Tom Crawford. I run a company called Biz Network, and right now we're developing an iPad app for helping people cook in the kitchen, and I'm looking for a writer. So if you know anybody that's a writer, uh, have them come see me. Mark Schistler with Third Screen Gurus. My company provides access to the mobile text communication channel for our businesses. We partner with marketing agencies and advertising agencies uh, to serve their clients in the marketing execution. Shannon Beeman, I'm with the Michigan Small Business and Technology Development Center of Washtenaw Community College. We're a nonprofit that offers low cost training and no cost counseling to small businesses in Washtenaw, Jackson, Lenaway, and Hillsdale counties. Hi, everyone. I'm Megan Crosby with the Charles Reinhardt Company. We just kicked off our 15th annual coat drive. 
So while you're cleaning out your closets, if you have any extra coats, we would appreciate the donation. We um, collect the coats in the community and donate them to 20 local agencies. Where are we collecting them at our Sunday open houses or at any of our offices, or you can contact me and I'll pick them up or you can deliver them to me directly. Thank you. Hi, I'm Scott Watchman. I work for East Search Vision here in town. We're a large scale uh, PPC tool provider, uh, working with agencies or large companies to help them distribute their ads to networks more efficiently. I'm uh, Chris Mullins. I also work with Research Vision. I'm an account manager for um, DPC. Aren't you something else too? And I'm Tiffany's fiance. <laughs> Grant by Camp. I work at GenX. Uh, we offer a full suite of digital marketing, including everything Tiffany talks about today. I'm Kurt Sherlock from Prince Studios, and I'm a commercial editor of Portrait Photographer. I always wonder, is it is he the frog or the prince? I think, yeah. <laughs> I think he used to be the frog. Yeah. yeah. I like it. Yeah, Carter, thanks for Carter for photographing the group. Uh, so my name is Derek Maribond, CEO of Injetic Digital Marketing. And um, glad to be here. I guess you can probably know what we do. But uh, you know, we build websites, we do social media marketing, paid and click, and SEO. And um, yeah, we have an exciting speaker next week, right? That D Davies gonna tell us about. First of all, thanks so much, Tiffany. You did a great job. Um, I am Dee Davey, Creative Ideas Marketing. I'm a contract independent marketing professional, and I help overstretched and under-resourced marketing managers get projects off their desk without the investment of a full-time resource. I also help product development teams create and launch new ideas for service concepts when they don't have enough resource to get the idea off the ground. D -day. Next week's speaker, we um, originally scheduled Matthew Brownie for today, but he will be coming in, especially for lunch and other marketing. Another one of Derek's many, many close contacts. Thank you, Derek. Matthew Brownie is a um, new technology guru, and he has spent many, many years looking at new technologies, and in particular, communication technologies, and how we can apply these to our marketing. So next week, Matthew Browning, learn from one of the networking and communications experts in our community. See you next week on Jan Arbor Marketing. Thank you.